Ahlan wa sahlan ya shabab. Welcome to part four of this view tutorial series. In the last part, we uh, started the project, we added some dependencies and so on and so forth. And now let's dive into it with the development stuff. For now, I just have also um, added a new fav icon. We will see it better in the browser, a new logo and also SVG format and so on and so forth. I mean, you can take it and if you like, or you can just stick with the um, default one from Beautify. Uh, now I've opened the index file, which is here. And just let me just collapse everything. And here's the index file, index HTML. Um, it's in the root folder. And here we'll say task view web app okay and yeah just let me align everything now i don't want to commit now i just want to just go to the terminal clear and we'll do of course p npm dev we start the dev server so you can either click on the link but i've already prepared something the local host colon 3000 takes a little bit to reload of course sometimes i just do reload again and as you can see we have now the logo we have here the fav icon and also the the, the tab is properly named task view web app and yes now we should Take a look at our API and uh, just refresh everything that everything works. Um, as you can see, um, we have here the, all the endpoints. We will not use all of them. Uh, basically, we will use most of them, but not uh, the one to, to get a specific task because you can, you don't need to send an extra request for this. And uh, yeah, uh, this is this is how we should send a request body for creating a task for post request. And this is the response. We will get the ID back and we'll get the created on blah, blah, blah. And here as well for fetching multiple tasks, here we just have to specify open or closed. And if we don't, it will give us the open and closed. And uh, yeah, that's basically it um so i would say let's just uh, start to implement our http client for this and uh, yeah let's hop back to the project and let's go to source and here we'll create a new package we'll call it directory services and I will just call it, give it a new name, and let's call it task API. Okay. Here we have to define some things. First thing, we have to define the base URL. And of course, we, we are using um, Axios. It's, um, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly not to German. <laughs> um, as you can see, we have here Axios, the mock adapter and some other Axios. Yeah, here's the actual dependency for it. Let me just close all the other tabs. And yeah, let's go back to task API. Now let's define a, a new base URL. Base, U -R base URL, let's call it like this. And here we just have to say this should be a string value. And of course, we don't have to type everything out by hand. Just go here. Like for instance, this. I mean, just to show you what, what your base URL is. Your base URL is, of course, the HTTP here until on render.com and then for instance, everything that comes after us. Slash API, slash we want, slash 
yeah, the the we ignore the um, the task part. It's everything from https.com slash API slash v1. Let's do this. Let's go here. And slash v1 slash. Okay, that's basically it. And now we have to define our API. So let's do this, which we can here specify what kind of uh, type this um, this variable should have, and it should be Axios instance. It's great. Let's import it, and here we say Axios dot create. And parentheses. Don't forget to use the semicolon at the end. And here we have to use the curly braces, and we have to say base URL. Okay. Uh, no, it's not base URL. I don't know why is. Okay. 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 Should be fine. Okay, this is good for now, but whenever we send an um, HTTP request, we also have to deal with the responses, like if it's a HTTP OK response, which is 200, or if it's a, a 404, not found. And unfortunately, in TypeScript or also the Axios instance doesn't provide such uh, HTTP constants. So I would say we create our own. Let's go to source. Let's call this constants. And here we'll just define our app constants. It's a TypeScript file, app constants. We have to export it because we want to. Um, this variable here should be available in the whole project, so that's why we need to use export const. Let's call it HTTP status. Curly braces and semicolon. Okay. We will type now OK and 200 and so on and so forth. Uh, yes, uh, this is a little bit tedious. And I don't. I think you don't have to watch me how type all of this out. I've already also mentioned everything here in my medium.com article. Let me just copy paste it quickly. So, so more importantly is that you know what I'm doing here. So this, this constant will be available in the whole application, the whole project. So what we are doing is we, for the most used HTTP um, status codes, uh, uh, it's, I have a typo in here, but sorry for this, HTTP status codes. Okay, uh, okay now. We have the the most used ones. I'm not quite sure if I will all use of them now in the project. You have to look it up. But yeah, like for created, for if you just send a delete request and it got successful, but you don't need a response from the from the API, just two two hundred two or four for no content. Bad request happens all the time for unauthorized if you're not logged in. But this is for sure we will not use. Maybe another tutorial we will use it. And also forbidden, we will not use for 404 not found if you send a request to a wrong URI. And internal server error, of course. Sorry. Uh, yeah. We will use them now in a sec. So let's jump back to the task API here. And 
And what we are going to do next, we will have to add, you can have an interceptor to give you the, the, the right um, the, the, the right response codes. So let's use the, the API interceptor here, API, because it's an Axios instance. And this is why it has already interceptors. That's nice. So when we send something in the to the to the API, we can use stuff here. The response that we get here, I mean, the response we get from the API, we can use the some things. Let's call it response. Response. So colon is of type Axios response. Yes, nice. And wait a second, where is uh, okay. Uh, so the response, what should it handle if it's an error? Let's do if it's an error case, error ac axios error, nice. What should happen then? Let's see. Uh, curly braces. Uh, now let's handle this. So it, now we have a if statement. If error dot response. It basically, if it's an error, if the response is an error, let's do something. And we save it. So should be we want to catch a status. So the we want to catch a status, so that's why we say here error dot response. Give me the status. As you can see, it's, it will be a number. Don't forget to close it. And what are we going to do next? Now we're checking if it's what kind of error uh, status it is. And uh, so that's why we have to check status. If it's equal, equal, HTTP, too many T's, status codes. And now we have to check for bad request. It's a, if it's a 404. So, if it's a bad request, we want to, of course, log it. Then we say console dot. Now you can see we have an error uh, object here, an um, error, error method. And we're going to say, let's say, da, 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 da. Bad request. That's something we want to lock. And of course, we are locking the whole data, like say error. Oh my gosh. Error response point. Yeah, data. That's good. That's good. Ah, I should expect I should expect this. Uh, that's nice. Now we have an if block. We can have an else if block. In else if, we will check for internal server error if the status is equal equals HTTP status codes internal server error. And of course, we will lock this as well. Basically, we can just copy paste this in here and say, um, of course, internal server error, internal server error. And of course, we want to also have here the response data. And otherwise, I mean, you can have here multiple checks, multiple else if, but 
for now, I would say for this tutorial, it's more than enough just to check for two things. And the third thing is the else block. You can also copy paste in here, just say, uh, just say here, error. And yeah, here for instance, the error, we just wanna have the message because we're not sure what the current error will be. And one more thing, one more thing. Let I have to look where because um, we are dealing with a with a promise. We have to also return something here. Return. Uh, we have to say promise and say reject. Error. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay. Looks good for now. Uh, yes, this looks good for now. And yes. It's basically this line, what it does is uh, error propagation forwards the error for individual request handling with promise.reject. Okay. Uh, next tutorial, I think, I don't want to make this tutorial much longer. Next tutorial, we have to also add some DTOs for returning stuff. And so see you in the next one. Ilalikaya, shabab.